All right, everybody, bear with me a second here. I got a new case on the phone and getting in the cradle is a little trickier. It sometimes stops the video from recording. All right, let's adjust this. A little more. It's so weird. It's like it looks like it's perfectly straight, but then it's not when I watch the videos later. Okay, so what do we got today? We got a really pretty knife. Probably one of the prettiest Rough Rider Reserves. I'm not going to do the unboxing. You've seen them in the nice tin and all that stuff. I've done that a bunch of times. I wanted to pull it out already and kind of get my thoughts together. And what I'm going to compare it to, and why I still think this is one of the best values out there, is I grabbed one of my other Rough Riders. I kind of went into my collection and said, okay, what are the other slip joints that are in the same rough size, similar construction, similar patterns, not including lockbacks, not big knives, you know, not modern knives, but more traditionals. And these are the ones I selected. So we got one from Rough Rider, I've got a GEC, I've got an example from Case, and then one from Boker. So what is this? This is the O, uh, the O266 or something, or the O26. You'll probably say it on the blade. <clears throat> what it is is it's a. Um, I don't know what I would call this pattern. I, I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's a sow belly, but it's got a really nice curve to it. It's very ergonomic. It kind of follows the flow of your hand. You've got the stainless steel bolsters on the end. You've got a really nice, rich um, micarta, like a burlap micarta, where you can almost feel the, the texture. Really beautiful shield, nicely done. The, no pins are proud. This is what I like about the value, although the price is starting to creep up on these, of the uh, Rough Rider Reserves. The Rough Riders are, you know, they're okay. They're cheap pocket knives. The reserves are kind of another animal. They tend to use D10, D2 or G10 or VG10. They are made in China, but they're made really nice. They've got beautiful grinds, beautiful blades, nice edges, razor sharp out of the box. They've got brass liners. They put stop pins down in there. See that little pin? That's what prevents the blade from smacking against that hump down there where the spring is located on a bunch of other knives, case and in bokers especially, you tend to get blade wrap. It's a really strong spring, does have a stop half on all three blades. And that snapping shut, that walk and talk that you want that's really tight and hard, <clears throat> it um, can ding up the blade on that spring with that pin. For that pin to go through the spring, they have to bump out the metal there a little bit. And that extra metal, that little hump you saw down in there, is what the blade snaps against. Rough Rider goes and puts blade stops. See that pin down in there? There's a pin going this way. And that hits that part of the blade. So it keeps it from over traveling from that heavy spring and going bunk against that steel spring, which is what puts a dent in your edge. I've had that on this. I've had it on multiple bokers, multiple cases. This one does not have that. So before we get into the blade shapes and sizes and comparisons and things, um, you've got D2. Here's what I like about these. When you look at the back of, the Boker's pretty good. The Boker's good, actually. I'm gonna, I'll give the Boker uh, high scores for that. Your GEC, when you look at the finish, how nicely they polish it. There's no edges or anything to catch on. There's not one side sticking up more than the other. The transitions, it's just beautifully polished and leveled. They really do a good job of making sure that all those edges, because you've got the edge of the <clears throat> scale, and then you got a little piece of liner, then you've got a spring, then you got another spring, then a piece of liner. Then it, so you got a whole bunch of pieces of, of different materials between different pieces of metal and then the scales. And they do a good job of making sure that all those ledge, uh, edges are all seamless and all uniform and at the same level so there's nothing to catch your finger on. It's nice. You know that? I'm catching on every single piece. It's not bad. I mean, it doesn't affect the use of the knife. It's just on these knives, nothing. They just take the extra step to make sure that everything is just that little bit of extra fit and finish and polish. Same thing here. You, you, when you feel that you go, oh, I can feel the transitions. No, you're feeling those, those little ridges that they mill into there to give it some texture and just, I don't know, make it look a little fancier. 
but the transition going from the scales to that is nothing. There's no pins. They do such a good job of polishing that and making sure that that is all uniform. You don't feel anything. You don't feel the shield. There's no, oh, I can catch my finger on one side, but not the other. They just do a really good job of fit and finish on these things. So this model 026 has a two and a half inch blade with, well, actually it's, it's almost a three inch blade, but it's got about a two and a half inch cutting edge. <clears throat> um, what would you call that? I mean, it's not a spear point. It's not a drop point. It's just a blade. It's pretty much flat. There's no real swedge to speak of. It's just got a little bit of belly there. Hmm, I don't know what you would call that blade shape. You've got your other two blades. So it follows a three blade pattern, a little bit reminiscent of a stockman. Um, but the other two blades are a little different. So here is basically just a smaller version of that. It's not a spade blade. That has a stabby point, but we'll go into that in a minute. And then you've got your spade blade. It's kind of exaggerated with that, that edge kind of cut there. And it swings up a little bit. It's got really good belly. That'll be good for certain types of cuts. That little guy, that little edge, that's two inch blade with a one and three quarter inch cutting. So for small tasks where you don't want to poke holes in things. And then you've got the little tiny blade, which is kind of like the big blade, but it's at this weird angle. And I'm trying to decide if I like that or not. I mean, it's good for doing draw cuts or anything where you're drawing the cut into you. Because, I mean, look at the angle it puts that at. Instead of you having to take, um, if you wanted to do a, a cut towards you and having to really turn your wrist up, you can just kind of hold it naturally and it just kind of comes up without you having to hook it like that. It's just, you, I don't know, for me, it, it puts it at a very nice uh, angle. I don't know if you would do those kind of cuts or you would just use that belly and it puts it at that angle to where you're not having to put your wrist up. You can keep your wrist really close and just cut through whatever. I, I don't know the real use of that. <clears throat> It's just different. It's interesting to me. So fit and finish on this is on par with anything on this table, including my GEC. Now this might be 1085 or 1095 steel, and you're going to say, well, it's a, it's a GEC. It, it's probably better made. It might be about $180 and $80. Now I mentioned before that the pricing is creeping up a bit on these. Um, but they're still in line with the cases and stuff. But I think as the, well, I don't know if it's just inflation, Bidenomics, or the fact that, you know, they're getting a reputation for making really good quality knives. Um, you know, would I say the GEC is better? Well, on average, yeah. But the GEC doesn't have a half stop. Um, the transitions on the GEC aren't as good. There was a couple little, the pins can be a little proud, like right there, I can catch my finger on it. Um, now that could just be the choice of the material because this is smooth and easier to polish than, you know, maybe something like that, that, uh, that has the, the, the ridges in it. This will rust more, the 1085 steel. So you can say, well, it's a better steel for holding an edge or this or that. I don't know, these two actually has really good qualities for edge retention and toughness. It's it's a good steel. Um, it's not a super steel, obviously, but it's a good steel. But I think their attention to detail, I think having the brass liners, which act as almost like, uh, I don't know if the blades have themselves have washers. There is a washer on that side. There might be thin washers in there on the other blades. But it's very smooth. It's very positive action. I haven't oiled this or broken it in or done anything to it. But it's a nice size. It's a good looking little pocket knife. It's very ergonomic. So I can get my hand on that and I'm not really hanging off and it follows the contours of my hand naturally. So if I'm doing cutting, if I'm doing it this way, it's very good. The blade is, you know, it's a slip joint so you won't want to jab in too hard. Um, you'd want to be careful. <clears throat> but I'll say having that point leading up instead of down, when you poke into something, it's going to more likely push the blade up into the more locked position unless you're, you know, a numpty, but if you push straight, when you've got a point that's down low, it's going to want to fold this way. So I actually, on a slip joint, I actually kind of prefer to have it up like that. Makes it a little less likely that uh, it'll close on your hand. For a size comparison, we'll compare it to my case trapper. <coughs> we'll get uh, 
that out there. My other, well, I've got a bunch of Rough Rider Reserves, but we get the little Barlow out there. And then we'll get out our Stockman. So it fits right in that size. It's a little thicker in the handle, but I kind of like that. I like the blade selection. I really like the Barlow. I think that's just such a beautiful classic design. It is just a little small for my hand. See, I'm having to kind of, if I grip it back here, now the blade's kind of going down into my hand. So then if I choke up on it, well, then my finger's having trouble getting on. So I tend to hold this one more out towards my fingertips because your hand gets its widest here and then starts to get narrow towards the fingers. So I tend to hold this out here, which you can certainly do. Um, but that just, I mean, I can just grab that. It just has a meatier handle. Really like the action, and I just think it's a gorgeous knife. Um, let's see if I got a piece of paper handy. Do a quick sharpness test. Yeah. Nice and sharp. Push test. Uh, let's grab this blade. Spay. Yeah. Push test. All right, not quite a push test on that blade. That's all right, I could probably strop that one up. Does the other one do? They're all slicing nice. Uh, I think I need new paper. The shorty blade. Oh yeah, real nice slicer, beautiful. Push test. Not quite a push test. Well, actually it does. It wasn't doing it here because that edge where I tore was all kind of rough, so it was folding it over. If I go to like a sharp, clean edge, that one actually does a really nice push test. So two out of the three blades do a push test, and um, they all slice really, really well. So that's good to know. Other than just stropping it real quick just to make sure everything's straight and no burrs, I think that'll be really good. <clears throat> that's a nice little knife. I really love, I think that the best value, if you want traditional knives, Rough Rider Reserve is where it's at. You're not going to find a better knife for $80 or less that's traditional, made with good steel, using things like Micarta, excellent construction, brass liners, using stop pins so that you don't get your uh, blades nicked up, having half stops. That is a beautiful, beautiful knife. I'm hoping that I'm picking up uh, all the detail here. The grinds. The polish on the blades. The edges are really, really nice. They're nicely done. They're as good as my Benchmade's out of the box. And then just looking at how nice that is. That is beautiful. That is a really, really nice job. <clears throat> I think I might be getting a cold, so my voice is kind of... I'm very sniffy. My voice is gravelly. I got a screaming headache, so... But it's okay. I'm, I've, I'm pushing through it and I'm doing this for you. All of you. I don't know how many views my knife reviews get, but I like it a lot. That's a nice knife. I can see myself carrying that. Lately, I've been carrying, you know, like a, a Delica 4 in combination with that um, Deluxe Tinker. But I think if I was to say, okay, well, for today, I'm going to the office and I just want to, you know, I don't, want, I don't need a whole utility knife. I'm not going to need pliers or something. I just want something nice and classy. You know, these are the kinds of knives I go to. This one's a little bit big. So again, if I'm trying to go discreet uh, in an office environment or something like that, I typically will grab that one, that one, or this one. This one just because it gives you multiple blades. So if you just have a small cutting task, you just pull a little tiny pen knife blade and do some cuts. But these tend to be my go-to where, you know, I'm dressing up nicer. I'm in an area where um, <clears throat> when people see this, they think of their granddad's knives. They don't think of something tactical. Uh, they don't view it as a weapon. They see it more as a tool. Cuts and stabs just as well as a spider go, but, uh, well, maybe not stab because it's not a, a locking blade, but in people's minds, they just see something like this. Or if you pull out the Swiss Army knife, they're like, well, everybody's got a Swiss Army knife. They don't think about it that much. Like, oh, you got scissors, you got can openers. You can downplay the fact that it's got a blade on it. And be like, well, yeah, I got scissors here because I'm cutting out something on whatever. And uh, I've got a screwdriver. I got to tighten the the screw on my desk or whatever, you know, people don't think of it as a weapon, even though you could, you know, cut someone with it. When you start pulling out the big knives or you pull out a Spiker Co. Paramilitary 2, those knives are meant to be used for other things than opening an Amazon package. They are designed for heavy duty cutting and stabbing into things. So that's where these knives come into my collection because people just look at that and they're like, 
oh man, it looks like, how old is that? You know, they don't think it's a new knife. I think it's probably something you got from your grandfather. It's been in the family a while. Um, and it just doesn't tend to alarm people. So that's where these fit in. And I think these are all beautiful examples of inexpensive. Well, this one's 180, but this I think I paid 64. This was, I think I paid just under $50 for, for the Boker. And I paid, I think, 80 on the dot for this one, plus tax. Just a beautiful, beautiful knife. I really like the lines of it. I like it's just that right size for a traditional folding pocket knife, if you want a slip joint. So toe cutter, what do you think of this one? You're, you're into the, you know, like the tactical blades and all that mall ninja shit. So, and I get it. I have a bunch of those, but what do you think of this bad boy? Rough Rider Reserve model 026. They just keep coming out with new designs. I mean, it's not their designs, but they come out with these new models. But look at the inside. This, I'll, I'll leave with this. When you talk about, oh, it's Chinese, this quality. Yeah, well, look at the quality. Look at how the attention to detail. When you look inside, I don't know. The Boker is okay. If you look down in there, it's not, you know, it, you can see a lot of machining marks and things like that. On the case knives, well, <laughs> you can't see much on inside the case knife because I had to put leather down in there to keep the blades from smacking into the springs and nicking up my edge every time. Um, but when you look at, look at that area inside there, okay? When you look at the back part of that blade, it's it's rough. They polish this part nice, but they don't polish all that stuff. There's just little extra attention to detail. When you look down inside, I mean, look at that. Everything has a clear, beautiful mirror polish. You don't see any machining marks, no nicks, no grooves, no grind marks. They take the time to polish that out. And even when you're on the back sides of the blades, look at that. Look at how nicely that is all polished. Everything is polished and assembled properly, not just the part they figure you're going to see the most. And then cut some corners and cut some time on, well, it's underneath. It doesn't really affect, you know, use or whatever, so it doesn't have to be pretty. They took the time. Actually, go here. Um, is this one? Uh, those are okay. They're not as highly polished as the rest of the blade, but they're not as bad as the case. If you look at the, uh, if you can, I don't know if it's picking up the detail down in there. But in any case, of the fit and finish, when you look inside the knife and you look at all the things where typically you could cut corners because you're like, well, it's not functional. It's not here. It's not what you're looking at every part. Of all these knives, the Rough Rider Reserves are the nicest. These things are absolutely beautifully put together. No blade wobble. That's another thing. It is very unusual to pick up a Rough Rider Reserve and have excessive blade wobble in a slip joint. This one's pretty good. This one's about as good as a Rough Rider Reserve. But when you start getting into the case and the bokers, I can feel that rocking. If I go to this one, I can feel that rocking. It's not horrible. It's within spec. It just, this feels just that bit more premium. This feels... When you look at the materials, the fit and finish, and how it's constructed, and how well it works, and all the attention to the little details that shouldn't matter, but they took the time to do it, this knife, this Rough Rider Reserve, is way closer and on par with the GEC than it is with the Bokers and Cases. Fact. So anyway, that is the new Rough Rider 026. Beautiful, 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 classy and ergonomic without being too big and bulky. It's just the right size for a folder. And you got redundancy, you got three different blades. You got blades for different types of cutting tasks, or I gotta get in there and hook something and cut towards me. Whereas with, you know, the straight blade might be too long if you had to cut a zip tie in a weird place to get in and then have to shift your grip up. Maybe you can't get your hand in there. Something like this where you can kinda slip it in a little bit and your hand is still out of the way and just boom, pull it and cut the zip tie. I mean, little things like that are nice. And then you got this for your draw cuts or something where you gotta do slicing and not have to worry about it. And I can hit that pretty hard without poking a hole. Eventually you'd poke it in, but hell of a lot, it would take a lot less, a more effort to do it than it would with something like that. You know, this is your stabby point. I like having multi-blade knives. You got different blades for different types of cutting tasks. 
And if you chip one or break a blade or you dull it out and you're out in the field somewhere where you don't have, you don't have the ability to sharpen it or grab another knife out of the drawer, all right, well, I guess that blade snapped. I was in a situation where I really had to wrench on something or do something in an emergency type situation or get the bike fixed and I had to cut something out of it, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm just making up situations, but you know what I mean? It gives you redundancy. All right, well, that blade's no good. Boom, I got another blade. Boom, I got that blade. Same thing with, you know, your your Stockmans. Same thing with here. I got two, oh, actually, this one's uh, almost a Stockman pattern. I got my, my sheep's foot for, you know, precise draw cuts like a scalpel. Then I've got my uh, spay blade, you know, so it's nice having redundancy and having extra blades. So anyway, I think I'm rambling at this point. Uh, oh, God damn, I went 20 minutes long on this one. Shit. All right. Well, sorry about that. It's a really good knife. It was worth the time to go into it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I got it from my friends over at Old Town Cutlery in Cumming, Georgia. Probably should have said that in the beginning because I don't know how many people are going to stick around to the end. So I will put it in the description. But um, I love this thing. This is a great, great knife, especially for the money. It's one thing to have a great knife. And other people say, well, it's great for the money. No, this is just a great goddamn knife that doesn't cost a whole lot. 80 bucks, 80 clams. Perfect. All right, we're going to go now.